Its leaders are indeed responsible for the death of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Saudi Arabia delivering a stern response today, saying our economy is influential and any action against the kingdom will be responded to with greater reaction. Joining me now, Democratic Congressman from Tennessee, Steve Cohen. Welcome back. Good to see you. And I'm curious, do you believe the president's uh, self-proclaimed past business dealings with Saudi Arabia will compromise his ability to be tough on that country in this case? Because he talks about having made millions and millions of dollars on deals with the Saudis. That's Donald Trump's number one concern in every action he takes is making money for him and his family. It's that type of behavior, which really was never envisioned to be this obvious and this outrageous, why the Founding Fathers put the Emoluments Clause in the Constitution to say that the President couldn't take money from a foreign potentate or power without the permission of Congress. This President has asked for no permission. He's taken money from the Saudis in Trump Tower, to where they've got a big holding, and in, at the Trump hotels where they stay every time they can. And he said publicly, that they have so much money, they pay just anything that he asks, they pay, just pay inordinate amounts of money for his condos. Historically, American foreign policy has been based on America's interest and America's values, and it's a balancing act. Now it's America's interest, America's values, and Trump's interests. And Trump's interests trump everything. That's why the Emoluments Clause lawsuit that Senator Blumenthal, myself, and mm. about 100 and some odd additional members of Congress is alive and, and, and active in the United States District Courts in Washington, D.C. Yeah. You mentioned Senator Blumenthal. I want to play uh, a little bit of what he said about the relationship between Donald Trump and Saudi Arabia. Let's listen to that. The United States should really be reevaluating its entire relationship with the Saudi kingdom. The 110 billion that's sold there cannot determine that we violate our basic values. Payments for rentals in Trump Towers, payments for condos that the Saudis have bought belonging to the Trump Organization, other kinds of financial dealings and interests. Look, you, you mentioned the Emoluments Clause. We have certain lawsuits that are up and running on uh, the basis of that. But how much do we really know about the financial dealings? And does Congress have actual power to mitigate any potential conflict of interest? We talk about it, but it is, we're saying nothing seems to ever get done about it. Well, the remedy is impeachment. And naturally, you need to have the votes. And the Republicans won't even consider any hearings and Judiciary Committee on any of the uh, alleged and I think obvious uh, misdeeds of the Trump team involved with the Russians and the election in 2016. Uh, therefore, nothing's come up. That was an issue that the judge had to deal with and whether to give us standing to proceed with our emoluments lawsuit in the federal courts because the other side said, no, the remedy is in impeachment. Well, it is, except when you have both the houses in charge of the same party as the president and, and have people that are not exercising their oath of office and looking out for the best interest of the American mm. people, but looking out for the interest of the American president. So we are active in court, and that's important. Uh, I filed a HRS 621 a goodly while ago. With We have about 17 or 18 sponsors to, for impeachment of the president. And one of the bases is emoluments clause violations, both foreign and domestic. And domestic is about the amount of money he makes from taking monies from the government for yeah. trips to Mar-a-Lago and charging our Secret Service to, for golf carts and food and rooms and you name it. Hmm. This is just a, 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 gang, a criminal enterprise run amok on the American people and the biggest con job on the face of the earth. Can, can I talk Trump taxes here? Because the IRS says there's nothing that prevents individuals from sharing taxes, their tax. It, 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 the, the, the tax if information. Trump Look, if, if, if Democrats take the House, first of all, can you get a hold of Donald Trump's taxes? And then can you somehow yes. make the, the president's tax returns public? Would you do that? How would you do that? Well, Representative Pascal has made an effort to get those taxes on the ways and means. There's a, a, a way to do it, legal way to do it. But the Republicans won't vote for it. He's brought it to the floor. The Republicans won't allow it to be voted on the floor or in committee. But if we have a majority, we will have his taxes and ways through that process. And Billy Pascrall's been a star. 
and we'll see his taxes. But do you, uh, when, do you have a sense returns. of what you would find in the tax returns? I mean, could it be less than you're imagining? I think it's going to be shocking. It's going to be a big goose egg that he used every avenue to avoid paying taxes and pays nothing. And it might, whether it exposes his involvement with the Saudis or the Russians is another question. I don't know that it'll necessarily expose those, but it'll show that he paid no taxes. He gave basically no charitable contributions. And he is an ogre. Hmm. And he is not somebody who pays his fair share. And when you get a hold of taxes, if you're able to do so, personal taxes, is that enough to satisfy the Democrats? Or then do you think you're going to go after corporate taxes? Well, I think they're all relevant, but I think New York State will look at them. And Robert Mueller, as his comptroller, uh, working with him, and he's testifying, and I think that's going to be looking at his corporate taxes. You know, New York State's looking at his false charitable contributions, how he used the charitable contributions to buy his portrait of himself, paintings of himself, and to buy off, make political contributions to, to uh, some officials in Florida and other places. Uh, this is just a, a criminal enterprise run amok, and there's going to be so much that will come out. Why Donald Trump is campaigning so hard is because he knows that if Congress goes to the Democrats, the truth will come out, and he can't bear the truth. The mm. truth will expose him, even to his people, for being a a false prophet, a liar, and a tax cheat. That's on his good days. <laughs> Let me uh, ask you about the Senate race in your state because it got a lot of high profile when a uh, fellow Tennessean and, and superstar singer Taylor Swift broke her silence on her political leanings. And former Governor Phil Bredson trails Marsha Blackburn. She endorsed Phil Bredson. Uh, this New York Times latest poll has it, I think, 14 percent. Yeah, we're showing the numbers here. But it did appear more competitive earlier. So what's your interpretation of what's happening? Well, I think the Kavanaugh hearings had an effect. And I don't know that the former Governor Bredesen helped himself particularly by saying he would have voted for Kavanaugh at the end. Uh, but he did, and it cost him some enthusiasm among Democrats. But when it gets down to it, Democrats will vote for Phil Bredesen, and we're going to have a big blue wave and a big turnout. I'm working to bring out the vote in the 9th District and urging people as the most important election in the history of our 9th Congressional District. We can make the difference in Tennessee and make the difference in the Senate by electing Phil Bredesen. I've served <coughs> four years while he was governor as a state senator. I've served with Marsha Blackburn for four years as a state senator and 12 years as a congressman. There's no comparison in the two people. It's like comparing Archie, uh, Archie Manning to the water boy. <laughs> well, we do know there was a huge spike in voter registration on the heels of uh, Taylor Swift calling for people to register to vote. So we will see what happens. I'm sure we'll talk with you again very soon, Congressman Steve Cohen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Fear of the president selling out to the Saudis. Even